Well, first, we got to understand that the word shaman comes from the West. It was a word given to people that were seen practicing kind of, you know, these ecstatic states of consciousness from Mongolia. And so the term really means, you know, this person that is stepping outside of ordinary consciousness into the unknown. They have a very specific role. And, you know, then they come back into normal, ordinary consciousness, typically having some kind of you know, knowledge or wisdom or gift to impart, which could be for healing purposes, or it could be direction, you know, for the, the people that are involved in needing that. Uh, the term is, it's an outsider's term. In the Amazon, they don't use the word shaman for each other. Like I wouldn't call myself a shaman mm -hmm. to another shaman. Uh, we're called medico vegetalista, which means doctor of plants or doctor of uh, mm -hmm. plant medicine. And so, that's much more like your naturopath or, you know, a person who specializes in herbs in the West. And so it's just kind of a term that, you know, people have accepted over time and I don't have any problem with it. Uh, but I do understand why some people have issues in terms of the conduct of different shamans or medicine people. It really comes down to their intentions. And uh, those intentions can be, you know, really wide in what they express. Some people are very egoic and it's all about themselves. Some people are very service oriented and it's all about providing service, support and help. And then uh, there are all different kinds of arts. There are healing arts, there are warrior arts, there are defensive arts, and then there are the arts that people use to you know, harm people, which is you know, for us a travesty and something that we think is mm. you know, really terrible, but it is something that exists in the world. And you know, when you study shamanism, it's something that needs to be looked at.